there. I am the Apostle John. You may have heard of me before. I was one of the twelve apostles of Jesus Christ. I am standing here in this garden of olive trees behind me, reminiscing about some of the things that happened uh, the week that Jesus became the Savior of all mankind. We had followed Jesus for three years and seen some amazing things and learned so much, uh, le learned so much about God and His plan to save His people. I mean all people. See, what we thought was that He was just go going to save us, the Israelites. But Jesus was the Messiah of all, the, of all mankind, of all the world. But we never dreamed what would happen that week that He became the Savior of all mankind. Jesus had talked about it, but I truly never understood until, it, until after it happened. It all started on a Sunday. We were on our way to the city of Jerusalem. Jesus had told us to go find the colt of a donkey and bring it to Him to ride on. We put our cloaks on it for Him to ride on. We then went ahead of Him singing and shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is He who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. And when the people in Jerusalem saw us coming, they laid their cloaks in the street and they waved palm branches and, showed, and, and shouted with us, Hosanna! Blessed is He who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. This was the sign of the entrance of a king, Jesus riding in on that colt, that He was the Messiah. What we had been waiting for, what we had been anticipating, what had been prophesied about in the Old Testament. But then a couple of days later, a woman named Mary came while we were eating a meal and poured a whole bottle of perfume all over Jesus' head and His feet, and she wiped them with her hair. We were all shocked and a little irritated because that was a lot of perfume. And it cost a whole year's wages. It seemed awful wasteful to us and didn't make any sense. Judas was really angry. He said that the perfume could have been sold and the money given to the poor. But really, come to find out, he, he wasn't con concerned about the poor. He just wanted some of the money because he had been stealing out of our money bag. Jesus said to us to leave her alone and that what she was doing was preparing him for his burial. This really perplexed us. His burial? But he's still alive. Then without us knowing it, Judas went to the chief priests who hated Jesus and asked them what they would give him if he could lead them to Jesus when there weren't any crowds around. You see, Jesus had cleared, the temp cleared all the people selling things out, out in the temple. He cleared it all out for the, you know, they were there selling things for the Passover and cheating the people out of their money and their animals. And, and so this was the second time that Jesus had done this. And then he healed many people while he was there and, and, and taught. And they loved him. And the crowds were overwhelming. And, they, and, and so Judas agreed to betray Jesus for 30 pieces of silver and take them to Jesus when no one was around because they were afraid of the crowds. Also, Jesus had taught about how the temple would be torn down, how His kingdom would come before we would die, how we would preach the gospel all over the world and be persecuted for it, and how He would come again when we least expect it. We had a hard time understanding all of this. Then on Thursday... Jesus had us go make preparations to eat the Passover meal, where we would eat a sacrificial lamb, unleavened bread, bitter herbs, and drink grape juice. Jesus again puzzled us when He stood up and took the bread and juice and passed them around saying, Take and eat, for these represent my, my body and my blood. Do this in remembrance of Me. And that's what you guys do on Sundays, right? That's called the Lord's Supper. That's what the Apostle Paul later named it. That was the first time we'd ever done that in remembrance of Jesus. That bread represented His body which was broken on the cross for, for our sake and His blood which was shed for the sins of all mankind. And Jesus said while we were eating that meal that the one who dipped His bread with His hand in the bowl at the same time as Jesus would betray Him. And we were perplexed and, and couldn't believe any of us would do that. We were so confused. 
Peter even asked me to ask Jesus who it would be. And Jesus said that it would be Judas and told him to go and do what he needed to do. We thought, uh, we thought maybe when Judas left that he was going to buy more food or something to eat since Judas had the money bag. But before he came back, we all went to the Mount of Olives where Jesus liked to pray, to the Garden of Gethsemane, which you see right here be behind me, where there was a grove of olive trees. And some of these very olive trees right here very well could have been some of the olive trees that Jesus and, and, the rest, and myself and the rest of the apostles walked by and, and prayed nearby. Jesus took Peter and James and myself a little farther in and asked us to keep watch and to pray that we didn't fall into temptation. We tried, but we were tired. It was very late, and we had just ate that meal. We were exhausted, and we were also sad because Jesus was talking about dying, and we didn't want to see him die. He was talking about leaving. We didn't want to see him leave, and that we would be alone. But after praying for an hour, Jesus found us asleep. And he told us to wake up and to keep watch so that we wouldn't fall into temptation. But we fell asleep again. I thought I heard him come back a second time, but I was too tired to open my eyes. And then after Jesus had prayed three times, it happened. Judas showed up with an angry mob and soldiers. And when he greeted Jesus with a kiss, they arrested him and took him away to the high priest. Peter asked the Lord if we should fight, and he pulled out a sword and he cut off one of the men's ears. But Jesus told him to stop, and he reached down and he picked the man's ear up, and he put it back on his, on his head, and he healed him. Then he looked at all of us and he said, This has taken place, that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. And then they hauled Jesus away, and we all ran in fear and deserted him, just like he said that we would just like it was predicted in the Scriptures. We were so ashamed. I was so ashamed. Jesus had been betrayed by one of His closest followers for 30 pieces of silver. What does it mean to be betrayed, you ask? Well, it means several things. First, it can mean to lead someone astray. Kind of like lying uh, to them to get what you want. Like sometimes I've heard of, uh, I've, I've heard of people and seen people when I was in school that they would just be friends with someone, maybe it's a smarter kid, not because they liked them or had anything in common, but because they wanted somebody that they could get help with for their homework or maybe just copy their homework. And so they would pretend to be their friends and betray them in that way. Another, another way that it means to, what it means to be betrayed is to give away secret information. It's like telling a secret that someone's asked you to keep. Or uh, if a friend threatens to tell a secret or spread a lie due to jealousy of a new friend. I've seen that happen. A lot of times it happens with, with girls, even girls your age. I've seen where a new kid comes to school, maybe a new girl comes to school, and she's trying to make friends, and you befriend her, and you guys start hanging out, you guys start, uh, start playing tag and, and jump rope and on the playground and whatever uh, you might do with, with your friends, and you start spending a lot of time with her, and your older friends, they might get a little jealous. And then they threaten to, to tell a secret that you've told to them. Like maybe about some boy you like, or, or, or maybe they, they, they threaten to spread a lie and say something mean and nasty about you if you don't quit playing with that friend and come play with them. That's betrayal. It's peer pressure. Bad peer pressure, too. Uh, to be betrayed also means to deliver to an enemy, like Judas did to Jesus. I've seen this happen too when I was in school. Sometimes I saw groups of, of, of buddies that would get one of their friends to go and, and, and fake being a friend with another student in the school that they liked to make fun of and pick on. 
And they would ask, and they would tell that friend, go over there and hey, go tell Tommy to come over and we want to talk to him. We want to hang out with him. And so they would lie to him, bring him over to the group, and then the group would just make fun of him. That's betrayal. You know, later on, Peter and I ended up following Jesus to the high priest's house to see what would happen to Jesus. And while he was there, Peter was questioned three times if he knew who Jesus was. And he denied Jesus all three times. He was very heartbroken. How do we deny Jesus in our lives? We, deny, we can deny Jesus in various ways. One way might be when we are afraid to tell others about him, when we are afraid to say that we know Jesus, just like Peter was afraid to, we deny him in our lives. We deny Jesus when we keep the secret that we believe in him or that we go to church because we're afraid to be made fun of. That's denying Jesus. Or when we love other things like money more than him. See, that's what Judas' main problem was was Judas loved money more than he did Jesus. And it led to him doing something very terrible and betraying the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. But do you know what the amazing thing is that I've learned about Jesus? That he loves us more than we could ever understand. And that he's willing to forgive us. That's why he said, all these things have to happen just as it's written in the Scripture. See, Jesus didn't come to be a king here on earth that us apostles could sit on his right and his left and rule the world. But he came to be the king of our hearts, the hearts of all people, of all mankind. And he would later on be crucified, buried in the ground, and arise three days later. And we're going to talk about that over the next couple of weeks. And he did that because he loved us, and he wanted to uh, make a way for us to be forgiven, because our God is a forgiving God. And he can forgive us of our mistakes and our sins against him. And I want you kids to always remember that. I also want you to remember this memory verse that, that from John 12, 13. It says, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. And maybe some of you first and second graders may need some motions that will help you remember that. So here's some motions. It says, uh, Hosanna. Blessed, blessings come down from heaven. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King, put a crown on, of Israel. John 12, 13. And I forgot to mention last week's memory verse to you, so I wanted to tell you, uh, make those known to you today. Matthew 4, 4, and Matthew 4, 7, and Matthew 4, 10. So if you get your mom and dad to help you look those up and memorize those, if you get those memorized, uh, maybe your mom and dad will have a prize or a treat for you, and we'll have some, and, and let, text me and let me know that you got those memorized, or even send me a video. And... Uh, and we'll make sure I keep track of that here, and we'll have something special when we all get back together. So until next time, see you later.